You know what? I am pumped. I am so pumped to tell you about this project that Devin is doing that starts tonight, Wednesday, June 29th at 6 o'clock here in New York City, 6 to 8 o'clock in New York City tonight. And is at the Listen Gallery, and it is a group sculpture show. Now, Devin Turnbull isn't strictly an artist. <laughs> He's not a sculptor, but what he is, is a speaker designer and an electronics designer, and he works with his collaborators to create truly uh, amazing pieces of audio equipment. He is an audiophile. He is one of us, but he is also an artist. And that's why they invited him to participate in this group sculpture art show. Now his, his sculpture is not just going to sit there. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a live music system. I don't mean live as in live music, but I mean it's a system that is going to play music and bring it to life. <laughs> now I recorded this interview yesterday on Tuesday and there was still construction going on in the gallery. There's a lot of, lot of activity going on, there, going on there. So you will hear background noises and people talking and stuff. I did my best to hush that. But the thing is, Devin was so excited. I mean, he's usually a really chill guy. But no, I mean, it was just radiating from him. Yeah, there was like so much going on in his head. But he calmed down enough to do the interview and talk about his plans for the show which include, well, in addition to DJing over the course of the show, over the weeks that the show is going to run, not every day, but many days, he is going to be playing a lot. There's going to be a period where he's going to have tapes loaned to him by Blue Note Records and play these tapes on a great, oh man, this machine, this Studer reel-to-reel -reel machine. And he's also going to have has tapes from a band, one of my favorites. I don't usually mention them, but bad, bad, not good. So he's going to have mixed down tapes from bad, bad, not good. They're, they're not even mastered tapes. That's how direct to the source they are. He's going to have, uh, in the coming weeks, Brian Eno's turntable, the turntable that Brian Eno designed playing some Brian Eno music. Uh, there's more and more and more. And the best way to keep up with it is to check uh, Devin's uh, Instagram page, which I will link below and the, the gallery's website, again, linked below. So anyway, uh, what's fantastic about this is that you can, at least if you're in the New York City area, finally get to hear Devon's speakers and Devon's electronics. This really hasn't been possible before, so it's a really big deal. And of course, the, there's no entrance fee to the gallery, so you can just come in and, uh, and see what happens. But anyway, this is me talking with my friend, Devin Turnbull. So Devin, we're here, hours from uh, showtime, actually, tomorrow. Pretty much so. So you got like 24 feel, hours, if, no rush. It feels like we're minutes from showtime, <laughs> but it has for several days now. Yeah, it's, yeah. But anyway, we're here at Lausanne Gallery. Listen, nice. listen Gallery, but listen like the street in London, not like listening like we do. Okay, not too confused. But anyway, uh, so you guys have been working here trying to get this thing together. I think it's really beautiful. I took a lot of pictures, but of course Thank the you. speakers Thank look you. great, and I like this new finish. Yeah, this is um, this is everything about this presentation was like, I would say, unreasonably ambitious. I would I would say <laughs> that's the best. Um, and you know, I think none of it was. Uh, None of it was anything we'd done before, exactly technically, aesthetically, in general. Um, there's almost everything in the show is an, kind of an innovation from stuff that we've been doing, which wow. is exciting. It's, you know, it was an amazing uh, motivator to like kind of get a lot of new work done by a certain time. Right. But also, obviously, incredibly stressful. Uh, we had only two months from the time I was invited to participate in the show and the opening of the show. And in two months, we built uh, a unique super sub. This, this double 15 cabinet design that we had never done before. Uh, these are the first um, of our kind of remanufactured, innovated 15 cell, multi-cell horn, right. 15 cell, 500 hertz horn. And you, you 3D print that? No, it's all 
sheet metal made by hand. Oh, wow. Um, uh, the, the turntable is sort of an innovation on the stuff I've been doing with the new Techniques flat rotor motors. Um, we built an outboard power supply and control unit for the turntable in collaboration with Linear Tube Audio. Those guys have been amazing at kind of helping us understand linear power supplies in a way that uh, they can with years of experience in that specific field. The Phono Stage is the first, essentially the first public prototype of what I'm hoping to commercialize in the near future. It's a collaboration with Steve Berger of April Sound. The Line Stage is a auto form of volume control passive unit that uh, I was just wiring up as you arrived. Right, yeah. 15 minutes ago. Or so. And then the amps, the amps also. So, I mean, all this stuff was handmade and much of it made in the last like two or three weeks. It's. Wow. Yeah, I mean, because everything was from inception to design to fabrication to wiring, all within that two month period. But the monoblocks are my iteration of, uh, or some my, my rendition of Herb Reichert's. Flesh and Bloods. Wow. Uh, from Sound Practices 8, his single end 300B design. Um, you know, Herb has become uh, an important figure in my, in my practice uh -huh. and a good friend. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's a, it's a great design. I've heard a couple of them before. Um, did a few things differently. You know, with a handmade amp, um, one off kind of boutique manufacturing. Um, no two things are ever quite the same, you know. Um, if I made that next month, it'd be a little different than this, this one if I made it next year. And Herb designed this thing, I think, uh, 20 or 30 years ago. So yeah. obviously At my, mine is going to be quite different than his. Uh, sometime in the late 90s, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. Um, and, uh, but yeah, so, and you know. And it's the flesh and blood. The flesh and blood. Okay. So, um, yeah. Herb, Herb will be here tomorrow, and hopefully, he feels that it's uh, it's an it's an accurate rendition of his original concept. I'm just finishing the amps now. That's, I think, a big part of what I want to share with people with a presentation like this. Is is this is not a product showcase? You know, that you're not at um, CES or uh, this is like this, this is, is art. More, it's, this is an art gallery. This is an art gallery. <laughs> this is an art show. But I think. If you're going to call it art, then you have to also maybe consider it partially performance art because mm. there's a cultural aspect to all of this too that's super important to me. You know, there's the uh, the act of making the equipment that for me is like maybe as important as the act of listening to the equipment. I think that the culture of designing, building, sharing, supporting amongst the, you know, relatively small community of people that are, that are, um, you know, engaged in building this kind of equipment, um, you know, sharing their experiences and, uh, and expertise. I mean, certainly I rely on a vast network of people smarter than me to teach me how to do this mm -hmm. stuff step by step. Um, you know, over the last week I've been FaceTiming, consulting with all kinds of people on all kinds of issues that we've done. And, and you know, you were telling um, some great stories earlier about similar experiences working for Sound for, Sound Sound for Singer, Singer yeah. when uh, people would come in and, and, you know, some prototype piece of gear would immediately catch on fire and right. get fixed and then yeah. be a smash hit. And then it's showtime, right. And then, and then showtime. But yeah, I mean, you know, this is also part of the process and uh, it's, it's, it's stressful when you know that there are a lot of people coming tomorrow to, to see the stuff, but um, it's also the fun part. I mean, I think there will be a lot of people here, not just to see me, but you know, there are 10 yeah. other artists in it's the show. It's a big, really big gallery. It's a big, yeah. beautiful gallery. And uh, you know, whether or not you um, are immersed in the New York gallery scene. I think it'd be a cool experience, just uh, in its own right. Uh, oh, absolutely. In terms of the and you got you know, the hip, the hip part of the room here in the back. This like is the where, where the, the people the in the know section. go, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's going to be interesting to see how how it goes tomorrow night. You know, um, I think the idea is we can 
fit about 15 or so people in the listening room. Because this is a listening room. This is not, um, it's a sculpture show. The show is a group show of sculpture. And, and you know, lis Listen is showing this listening room essentially as a sculpture. So it's not that this is a sculpture and that's a sculpture. And it's that the whole experience and, um, and, and body of work, the whole sound system that we're listening to is, mm. is one sculptural piece. But of course, we wanted, you know, it's, this is not just, a, it's not, it's not just a sculpture, it's an interactive sculpture. And, you know, we're very particular about how we listen to these things. Of course. So we also invested heavily in acoustically treating the room. Um, including the ceiling. Including the ceiling, yeah. we have um, absorption on most of the surfaces. But yeah, I mean, every every part of this, I think, is like uh, something that's like very has deep personal meaning to me. Yeah, it's a labor of love, you know. I mean, I I I, I really poured myself into this as intensely as I can imagine having done. Like having a baby. Like having <laughs> a baby. So you know, and that's that's I think. You know, in all seriousness, um, you know, I hope that pe when people come and experience the work, they understand that it is like something that I kind of birthed, didn't just kind of like high level curate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's going to be up for a while. So it's going to be up for a little more than five weeks. Okay. And we have a lot of really cool um, partnerships that we're doing. So for the first two or three days of the show, I'm going to just kind of like freestyle in here. I'm going to be in the space. Oh, right from six to eight during the opening, and then for most of the day, Thursday and Friday, while the gallery's open. The gallery's then gonna be closed for the long weekend, 4th of July. And then Tuesday through Friday the following week, we're doing a partnership with Bad Bad Not Good, a band that yeah, I'm close yeah. with and right. you're familiar with. So um, that's gonna be really cool. Bad Bad sent, uh, I hit up Alex about, you know, the concept of the show and, um, and you know, sort of looking for an analog experience and a high fidelity analog experience of, of their music. You know, um, they're also obviously fanatics and, and geniuses. And um, so the studio that they record at in Vancouver is an analog studio. They record to two track, or sorry, two inch tape, and, uh, and then mix down to two track quarter inch 15 inch tape. So um, at that point, then, there's an analog to digital transfer, and it's digitally mastered. Mm -hmm. But the mix down is the last pure analog copy of the music. Right. Uh, so I think it's going to be really interesting. They made us dupes of the mix down reels. So they're unmastered studio mixes. Um, pure analog, then they also made us tape prints of the digital master, and we've also got the vinyl. So we can do some real audio nerd stuff Yeah, in direct here. from the source. I direct mean, that's the, the thing. Source. To me, it's always this mystery of, really, there's lots of, I always say this, there's lots of masters, lots of, this is like dire as direct it can, as can be. Yeah. So then, speaking of direct as can be, um, the galleries closed on Saturday and Sunday, the following Oh, no, sorry, the guy was typically closed on Saturday and Sunday, but that Saturday, which I believe is, what's that Saturday? Well, anyway, that Saturday we're going to have a small kind of party by invite only to debut a very special body of work that we have from Blue Note. Um, can I, you want to grab the tapes real quick and uh, can you reach them? Um, yeah, so Blue Note sent us a whole host of Tone Poet vinyl, which is really exciting, but probably more exciting. So we have this Studer A810 two-track tape machine um, for playback of all this quarter-inch tape. Um, I think that tape is a really exciting component of a system like this mm. because it, it adds this as you know, as you mentioned, it adds this other element of kind of like music hunting mm, that yeah. is is sort of like the most elusive and mysterious way of acquiring music. But Blue Note sent us 
protection copies of two albums. Right. Um, and this is just super exciting. We haven't heard them yet, but we've got um, we've got this 15 Ips copy of Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers Free For All. And this, as you can tell, is straight from the source. Right. So, so cool. Uh, you know, originally recorded by RVG, 710-1964. And then um, I assume this protection copy was made on January 24th, 1973. Mm -hmm. So, Rudy Van Gelder. Yes, Rudy Van Gelder, straight from the source. Um, and then uh, we also have Dexter Gordon, a Swingin' Affair. Um, so then that following week, Monday to Friday, will be Blue Note Week here. And uh, so we're going to have like a daily program so that uh, you kind of know. So will that be on the, the gallery's website? The yeah, it'll be on the here? gallery's website. Um, I'll be sharing as we you know, finalize all this stuff. I'll be sharing it um, on my Instagram. and. Okay. and um, there will be some way to find out what the program okay. is. But yeah, so it'll be kind of a daily program of um, you know, 10, 10, 30, 11, 11, 30. So you'll know that if there's a particular record you really want to hear, uh -huh. what time you have to come, or just drop in, and there's going to be great classic Blue Note records yeah, playing this in here. Is, this is great. It'll be fun. Um, then uh, I, we don't have the sequence of the following few uh, confirmed engagements, but um, we have incredibly, part incredibly exciting partnerships. We have Brian Eno, really? who, uh, Brian Eno did a project with a gallery in London. He made this beautiful lucite turntable that changes colors. Oh, I've seen pictures. I've seen yeah, pictures yeah. of that? Right. So they're sending the turntable out here. Wow. And uh, we're going to play Music for Installations, the record he put out three, three or four years ago. It's a, it's an, I love it. It's a beautiful record. It's, I think, five or six vinyl albums long. And we're going to play it on the turntable just kind of constantly for the week. I think we'll do a special opening for that as well. It'll be super fun. Yeah. Uh, and then we have Deutsche Grammophon. Some of the newer stuff, younger stuff that they're doing, and some of the more traditional classical music that they're known for. Uh, and then another partnership we're going to do is with one of my absolute favorite new labels, Spirit Muse, out of London. Um, they just have a, a, a new but incredible catalog of records they've been putting out for the last few years. Um, and we're hoping that we'll have a couple performances wrapped up into that chapter as well. And obviously, when I say performance, again, only 15 or so people fit in here. So um, it's not going to be by any means a concert. But what I'm thinking to do is a very simple two mic setup, record a live performance in the space, direct to tape, mm. and then use that as the playback for a few days. Wow. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I think we have a few other partnerships we're working on. Hopefully, they'll confirm, and, and we'll be communicating what those are going to be. Wow. That's a lot. Thanks, man. Congratulations. That means so much for you to be here and uh, be talking to you about it. You know, this, mm -hmm. there's nobody else that I'd want to, uh, to kind of, like, communicate this through more than you. So Yikes. Yeah, well, thank we're you. We're psyched to have you here. Oh, and the, gallery, the gallery is excited as well. Um, you know, they asked, like, what about like the like, you know? They, they obviously have the art press. Um, that's 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 their world. That's what they do. But um, they're like, what about like the audio press and stuff? <laughs> and I was press, like, so I've already got, got this. One. I've All got right. this. I'm working on it. We got it. <laughs> okay. That's awesome. All right. Well, congratulations. Thanks so much. Steve. I'll be here tomorrow. And uh, and everybody who's watching can come check the website the, the gallery website i will link to it below and because uh, it's going to be here you said five weeks yeah so. uh five and a half weeks so it's going to be up through at least august 5th we might okay. try and do a special thing on the 6th if they let us extend a day uh -huh. but yeah five five and a half weeks wow so if you're if you guys out there are anywhere near new york city make it come here <laughs> anyway thanks Devin. this was a pleasure thank you steve I'll see you real soon. Yeah, thanks, man.